All right. So there we go. Beautiful. Thanks, David, for the nice invitation. It's really a pleasure and a privilege uh, for me to be here with you. Uh, of course, like ev all of us, we ha I had hoped that we would be in person and interact and have a discussion in person, and get to know uh, each other more. But I hope in the years to come, that will be uh, more opportunities. So today, what I want to share with you is rec recent observation in the lab uh, about the role of providing protein, in particular, this protein HUR, which my lab was built on it 20 years ago. Uh, and its role in uh, muscle function and muscle integrity. Uh, so I'm assuming based on the great work David is doing and the Institute, uh, the Muscle Institute, you all know muscle uh, fiber formation, the mechanism, but let me remind you quickly. Uh, as you know, muscle fiber formation uh, is... Uh, a vital process that is required to build muscles during embryogenesis, and more importantly, or as importantly, uh, regenerate muscle in response to various injury. And we have injury all the time, including when we exercise micro injury, as you know. So muscle fiber formation starts with uh, satellite cells that are found uh, dormant in between our fibers. And as soon as, for example, we have an injury, muscle satellite cells start dividing uh, and to produce what we call myoblasts. And myoblasts will, uh, will fuse and give, us, give rise to muscle fibers. To, for this to happen, there are a few key players that we call myogenic regulatory factors. These myogenic regulatory factors, uh, a family of transcription factors that regulate, for example, the transition of satellite cells uh, from being uh, stem cells to become myoblasts, and they are activated early on during the process. Then when they reach certain number, they engage, uh, activate secondary MRFs, which are myogenin, MRF4, et cetera. I'm not citing them all. And together, all that will lead to cell cycle arrest by activating these type of kinases, P21, P27, et cetera, that uh, stop the cell cycle and there is activation of the fusion process and the formation of beautiful fibers. So in my lab, when we started asking the questions that what are uh, the mechanisms that regulate gene expression? Obviously, when I started the lab, we know a lot about transcription, how transcription promotes muscle fiber formation via these factors and others. However, post-transcription regulation were really in unknown territory. So since I was working on this tiny protein called HUR, RNA binding protein was discovered in 1996. And we, uh, we started in, during my postdoc finding out some of its functions. When I moved to McGill, I asked the question whether this protein could play a role uh, in muscle fiber formation. So what we did, we knocked down the protein and we uh, re-expressed and we found out, uh, we published several observations that are summarized here. What we found that HUR, for example, during the early stage of my, uh, during myogenesis, specifically during the three fusion steps, promote or stabilizes MRF such as myogenin and uh, myOD, it's, uh, uh, myogenin and uh, P21. However, during the early steps of the muscle fiber formation, HUR does uh, several functions, which are relevant to my conclusion at the end of my talk. Keep this in mind. For example, HUR help uh, suppressing the expression of this uh, nuclear factor, nucleophosmin, MPM is nucleophosmin, have a role in modulating chromatin condensation uh, in the nucleus. It needs to be downregulated for the promotion of muscle differ uh, of differentiation of other cell type, and we found that is the case indeed in uh, early steps of muscle fiber formation. HUR helps this process. On the other hand, also HUR at the same time promote the translation of a, f uh, a factor called HMGB1, this uh, cytokine or late cytokine that is involved in inflammation and is involved in muscle repair. HUR help promote again, and the sum of all these actions is required to make fiber uh, fuse and form 
and function, in fact. All these observations for the last many years, 15 or so, that make me feel uh, old when I think about that. Uh, and David also made some observation regarding the, uh, the expression of RNA binding protein among those HUR and others. Uh, we, we tested them all in vitro. So, however, the function of HUR in vivo was unknown until uh, a year ago uh, in muscle. Okay? So, what we decided is to do answer that question is to knock out HUR and see the impact on uh, muscle in mice. Obviously, we thought the easy way is to do total knockout. However, many years ago, uh, one of our uh, collaborator, uh, <coughs> Dr. Cotonianos, published a paper in 2009 showing that total knockout of HUR lead to embryonic lethality at uh, day 10.5. So it was not, uh, that was not the way. So we decided to do muscle specific uh, knockout where I used the Crelox P system. I'm not going through uh, details of how we did it, and I will be happy to answer any questions, but it w uh, we expressed CRE under the MyUD promoter, and we, uh, of course, we generated the, the ELAV uh, or the HURG in flock, uh, we put between flocks, and by expressing CRE, we generated these knockout mice. The, the, it works, it took us six years to generate these mice and understand what they are the impact of this knockout. And as you see here, uh, one of the tests we did is, this is a Western blot. We isolated the gastrocinemas and compared it to the cardiac muscle, and we show indeed that the total knockout mice do not express uh, HUR, while the cardiac muscle uh, express nice, uh, uh, nicely HUR. So the knockout worked. Unfortunately, and to my dismay, I remember many years ago when we got that results, we, I kept insisting, we repeated, we followed these mice, they are healthy, they eat well, they don't lose weight, uh, and they function well. So that was a disappointment because until then we accumulated uh, several labs, including mine, accumulated obs key observation that in, in vitro, HUR is really required for muscle fiber formation. So we assumed, okay, there are two ways. Either the in vivo observations contradict and negate the in vitro alteration, or there is redundancy and HUR will have uh, a more subtle uh, function uh, in postnatal uh, stages uh, of an organism. So what we did, we assessed what's the impact of HUR on the function, uh, on muscle functions. We did several tests. We did, um, uh, we measured the force, we measured the endurance, and uh, by doing several approach, one of them is when we put uh, we use trade mill exhaustion test, and here just a video. I hope that everybody uh, can see it. Uh, what we did, we put mice uh, run on the treadmill under exhaustion, and you see here the solid line represents the wild type. Uh, the majority of the wild types stop running after 20 minutes. However, the uh, mice that do not express HUR in muscle, they continue running beyond. 27, 28 minutes, etc. The, the majority of them. So, in addition to this, we did several tests to assess the metabolic function of the mice, and we found that, uh, in addition to the endurance, the HUR knockout mice. I use loosely the term. I, I, understandably, that's the HUR muscle-specific knockout mice that I, that I mean. Uh, they have increase in oxygen consumption increase in, uh, uh, in CO2 release, and also we saw an enhanced mitochondrial oxidative respiration capacity. All that uh, is in, uh, I mean, we can discuss it later on if you want details on this observation. This led us to the conclusion that these mice lacking HUR in their muscle represents an oxidative phenotype because the addition of the, all these observations together, that's what uh, indicates. So as we know, uh, and I'm sure you know better than me, that one of the, uh, the, uh, the phenotype that is associated with oxidative phenotype, uh, the endurance, is, for, is the feature of marathon runner, where they have a high level of oxidative fiber, as opposite to sprinter, where they have high uh, prevalence of glycolytic fibers. And 
fiber types are divided in several groups where fi uh, muscle fiber type 1 or oxidative fiber are highly oxidative. Type 2 uh, have are more oxidative than glycolytic to X and 2B are more glycolytic or highly glycolytic fibers. So what we decided to do to assess, to look what are the type of fiber composition of HUR knockout mice, or muscle-specific HUR knockout mice. So what we did, again, we did several tests. One of them is cross-section analysis using uh, ATP, made, uh, uh, using several antibodies that uh, assess, uh, follow the expression of specific myelogen heavy chains, for example, myelogen heavy chain type 1, myelogen heavy chain type 2, and myelogen heavy chain type 2B. And the one, the fibers that are not stained by any of these uh, antibody indicate uh, assess 2X. Here we did it on the soleus, but also we did it on the EDL and the peroneus. And what we saw uh, that the typical fiber type distribution in the soleus, for example, which we know it's highly oxidative uh, muscle, is this way. You have 40% type 1, around 50% type 2A, and almost hardly no type 2B or 2X. So what we uh, found, surprisingly and consistently, that in the soleus and the other muscle, you have a significant increase in the level of oxidative fiber while you see a decrease uh, in type 2A, which I said it's a mix between uh, have oxidative activity and glycolytic activity. And that was also obvious in the other type of muscle. So the conclusion from these slides, before I move on, the conclusion was that knocking out HUR from skeletal muscle enhance muscle endurance and promote the formation of oxidative fiber, which indicate that, in fact, HUR role under normal condition is probably to promote glycolytic fibers. Keep that in mind uh, while we are continuing. So obviously, the next question for us was to determine what is the mechanism, how HUR does it to favor fiber type switch. So like the classic approach, we did RNA-seq analysis on uh, the muscles from wild type and HUR. This analysis was done on the soleus, since we saw the phenotype, as I showed you, uh, first on the soleus. And as we, we s found out that there are almost 2,000 genes affected up or down when you remove HUR. The right side of the screen shows this, the genes that are upregulated, and the left side shows the genes that are downregulated. We found out that almost 1,700 genes are upregulated in the absence of HUR, while 200 genes are downregulated. This, in many ways, was a sur surprise to us, at least a few years ago, because HUR is known mainly or primarily as a factor that stabilizes target messages. So to see that in its absence, there are 85% of the genes affected are upregulated, was an indication, at least in the soleus, that HUR may be playing a role as a destabilizer. And I showed you early on in one, uh, my first slide that the role of HUR destabilizing target message has been published by, uh, uh, by my lab and others. So we said, huh, this is interesting. Then, obviously, the next step was to identify the pathway affected by the, in the absence of, uh, of HUR. We perform an ingenuity pathway analysis, and for the sake of time, I am not showing you the detailed analysis, and I would be happy to answer any question and show you the data for those who are interested. But the two pathways that stood out, or the main pathway that is stood out, is the pathway driven by the, uh, the peroxisome proliferate activated receptor alpha. So the PPR alpha uh, uh, is activated, the pathway, and that's what we realized, the two main pathways that are observed, and these are the mechanism, also the mechanism of gene regulation by peroxisome proliferation. So we know that PPR alpha pathway play a critical role in energy production, lipid and carbohydrate metabolism, and the expression of uh, genes involved in promoting oxidative <coughs> mitochondria beta oxidation. 
also what we know that PPR uh, alpha collaborates with uh, PGC1 alpha to promote the formation of uh, type 1 fibers. Remember that in the absence of HUR, we have more oxidative fiber, more type 1 fiber. So that, that was the, uh, the observation. So this is, is consistent with our observations. So what we did, we took a sample uh, of messages that we wanted to validate uh, related to the phenotype that we have. Obviously, we assessed the expression of messages that are associated with oxidative fiber type 1 specification and the other group of messages that are associated with the, glycolytic, the formation uh, of glycolytic fibers. And consistently, we saw, for example, in the absence of HUR, it has upregulation of the steady state level of PGC1 alpha, while you see downregulation of messages involved in glycolytic fiber. Uh, like TPM1, MyUD, etc. When we assessed the protein level of PCC1 alpha, for example, in this muscle, we found consistent results. We have at least uh, upregulation by twofold of PCC1 alpha in the absence of uh, HUR <coughs> in this muscle. So that's consistent. So what we asked ourselves since PCC1 alpha stood out as one of the most upregulated mass in the absence of HUR. And we know that PGC1 alpha upregulation favor uh, type 1 fiber formation or specification to be more accurate. So we assessed is PGC1 alpha mRNA a target for HUR? So actually, and this observation, and David, please correct me uh, if I'm wrong, uh, my understanding of this observation has been already made by uh, David Lab where they show that upregulation of PGC1 alpha expression is correlates with fiber type formation and the downregulation of uh, expression of some RNA binding process such as HUR. So what we assessed, does HUR associate with PGC1 alpha message? We performed uh, a RIP analysis, which RNA immunoprecipitation, where we use the anti-HUR antibody we perform immunoprecipitation at this Western block to show you that the immunoprecipitation worked very well compared to the IgG control. And we assessed the, uh, whether a PGC1 alpha associate. And as you see here, PGC1 alpha is enriched by many faults in the immunoprecipitate with anti HUR antibody. So the answer HUR associate with PGC1 alpha mRNA. So, and since for these experiments, sorry, I forget to tell you, we used C to C12 cell lines because they were easier to manipulate and uh, immunoprecipitation works uh, better in these cells compared to uh, total muscle extracts, which really we struggled with it. Now the pro problem is solved in the lab, but at that time when we are doing the study, we were really having a hard time, but we optimized it. I, had I have talented postdoc who really optimized this condition. Anyway, so what we saw that when we knocked down in C to C12 HUR, similarly to the muscle, the skeletal muscle, we see upregulation of PGC1 alpha protein. Uh, so this way, whatever we see in C to C12 vis a vis PGC1 alpha uh, can be probably translated or. Uh, help understand what's happening in skeletal muscle. So what we did, does HUR, remember I told you that HUR affect the half-life of target messages. So we knocked down HUR in C2C12 and assessed the half-life of PGC1 for mRNA. Typically what we do to, for these experiments is that we do actinomycin D pulse chase. So we grow our uh, C2C12, we induce further differentiation, then we incubate them with actinomycin D and do a time course. But here, time course uh, indicates for six hours. And we collect regularly samples throughout the time course and assess the level, the expression level of a given message, in this case, PGC1 alpha. If you follow the solid line uh, in wild type cells, the half life of PGC1 alpha is around for uh, around five hours. However, in the absence of HUR, 
six hours later and we have still 100% of PGC1 alpha mRNA left. So this indicates to us that probably HUR and the normal condition, it destabilizes PGC1 alpha mRNA. That's the, uh, the conclusion. As I mentioned to you, we saw this previously in 2014, HUR does the same thing for nucleophosphate in uh, muscle cells. In that study, we also showed that to do so, HUR collaborates with an mRNA decay factor uh, called KSRP. KSRP is an RNA binding protein, has a KH domain, and known to uh, help degrade target messages. It's not an RNA, it does not have an RNA's activity, but help recruit the exosome, uh, which is uh, a nuclease machinery, both nuclear and cytoplasmic. So what we showed is that HUR and KSRP form a tight complex in that study. Yeah? And that, uh, that complex associated with the three prime meter of nucleophosphate recruits the exosome um, and trigger promote the decay of nucleophosphate mRNA. And that event was required for the early steps of myogenesis. We asked ourselves whether this is the case also for PCC1 alpha. So what we did, we performed the first question, does KSRP associate with PCC1 alpha? We performed immunoprecipitation uh, with anti-KSRP and IgG as a control. Immunoprecipitation work, this is Western blood. And this is PCR where we assess the, uh, how my, uh, PCC1 alpha mRNA in the immunoprecipitate. And as you see, we have an enrichment by almost 70%. So the answer is indeed KSRP associate with uh, PCC1 alpha mRNA. What happened when we knocked down KSRP? Similar observation than HUR. We did the same actinomycin D experiment. Wild type uh, cells, as you see, similarly around four and a half to five hours half-life of PCC1 alpha in the absence of KSRP. Six hours later, and you still have 100% of, uh, uh, of the message. So I'm just checking the time. I hope one I minute, Dr. Galuzzi, one minute. One minute, okay. Yep. So, so then... The conclusion here is that HUR under normal conditions promote the formation of glycolytic fiber by destabilizing PGC1 alpha in a KSRP dependent manner. So, now, since, uh, and sorry for uh, the time constraints, we assessed whether uh, is this relevant to a disease situation. So, the answer is yes. And the reason why we asked that question because my lab has been interested in muscle wasting. And one of the things we know in the field that uh, uh, type 1 fibers are less prone to be uh, wasted under disease conditions such as cancer uh, uh, as opposite to uh, type 2. And to also increase, enhance, uh, elevate expression of PCC1 alpha protects against uh, muscle atrophy or disease-induced muscle atrophy. So that leads to a disease called cachexia and 30% of cancer patients in general die by this disease. And uh, one of the things that trigger cachexia is cytokines. And we show that HUR play a role before many years ago by uh, uh, helping cytokines uh, promote cachexia by stabilizing one of the effector ions. So here, what we did to address our question, we did a xenograph experiment where we triggered cancer in mice by expressing Lewis lung carcinoma. Th uh, 30 days later, normally these mice really develop a waste between 20 to 30% of their uh, muscle mass. Here the example, these mice, for example, when you look to the quad, gastric, etc., you see very significant wasting uh, by the third to fourth week. In the absence of HUR, these mu muscles are significantly protected against cancer-induced wasting. So the answer is yes, HUR depletion protect against muscle wasting. Now, can HUR be a drug target for, to combat cancer-induced muscle wasting? That's a question we are uh, uh, asking ourselves these days, and we are trying to answer. And just if, David, you, I made the 30 seconds to show you, I want to leave you with this idea that, in fact, HUR, as I showed you, known to do many functions, 
stabilized target message, remote decay, remote translation to promote fiber fiber uh, formation. Also, HUR, we showed, and unfortunately, I didn't have time to show you uh, the, uh, or indicate our story, stabilize INOS message and promote the translation of STAT3, both of which are key effector in inducing muscle atrophy. And that will induce muscle wasting. The question that I leave you with, how come the same protein can switch from being beneficial to being deleterious? That's exactly what we are doing these days, and I hope in the coming years, I can be, uh, I can come back and tell you what we found. So, and I want really to finish by thanking outstanding group that I have, specifically Brenda uh, Sanchez, who drove the work I presented here in collaboration with Anne-Marie Trondry and uh, Suad, who led the work that we published at the same time on HUR and muscle wasting and of course, collaborator and funded agency. Thank you for your time and sorry for being over time. No, that is wonderful. That is a wonderful talk. So fascinating, especially uh, since we always thought, at least from my point of view, that UR was a, HUR was a stabilizing protein. Uh, and you're showing quite clearly that it is a destabilizing protein. Is there any evidence that it does stabilize, or is it really now should be considered a destabilizer? No, no, that's what, uh, if I may, I don't know whether you are still sharing the screen. That's why it is now well established that HUR does all of these functions. I see. And what mm -hmm. is interesting, David, is in our story, uh, when we show HUR promote the translation of STAT3, we did um, a rip chip analysis and we, and we found that under cachectic condition or under condition where muscle will undergo wasting, mm -hmm. HUR completely lose the ability to uh, associate with these factors and others and will become able to associate with, factor, with messages like STAT3 and INOS and promote their expression and promote wasting. So it's like HUR is Jack and Hyde. Um, uh, yeah. So have the two functions. What make that switch? I can tell you now, we know post-translation modification like parilation play a role. And we know RNA binding protein form complex with RNA binding protein to do some of these factors such as stabilization, for example. That's two ongoing story. Okay. And uh, the increase in, in PGC1 that you see when you knock down at UR, is that accompanied by an increase in mitochondrial markers, mitochondrial respiration that could lead to an increase in endurance? So, yes, the answer is yes, but not all of them. For example, we saw that upregulation of the nuclear factor receptor one, but no effect on many others. So what we said, we, our conclusion for that is uh, HUR help mitochondrial respiration, promote mitochondrial respiration because we sell complex three, complex four, and complex five are upregulated. But mitochondria biogenesis, we did not see a difference. We don't know why. Normally, having upregulation of PGC1 alpha should also be accompanied with more mitochondria in terms of uh, biogenesis, but we did not see that effect. But we saw oxidative respiration enhanced dramatically. That's data mm -hmm. in the paper. I did not show them. Very nice, very nice. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Galuzzi. We're gonna move on now. If people have other questions for Dr. Galuzzi, please uh, put them in the chat box and uh, share them with Dr. Galuzzi, and I'm sure he'd be pleased to answer some of those questions.